Hey everyone, I would like to introduce you to one of my older boas. This is Blue. Blue is a very special boa. She is quite unique in a number of ways. Some good, some interesting, and some not so good. So I'd like to kind of tell you a little bit about her backstory and a little bit more just kind of about some general boa info in general while I talk to you about this girl. So this girl came to me from uh, what is essentially a fauna classified or king snake ad back in 2016. I honestly don't remember which one it was. Um, got this from a theoretical boa breeder in, I think it was Memphis, Tennessee. I know it was Tennessee, um, but it might have just been the hub in Memphis, but did originally, she did come from a breeder in Tennessee. Now, when you look at her, you can clearly see that she doesn't look like a regular boa. And by regular boa, I of course mean like an emperor arter, a common boa, or even like the true red tails of like the Suriname, Southern Brazilian and Peruvian Guyana origins, right? So what this girl is, is in fact, she is a mutt. Now I've talked to quite a few people fairly recently about the mutt boas we have in the hobby. Most of the boa constrictors we have as far as especially concerning a lot of the morphs are mutts. They are crosses, however diluted down, between imperators, typically of Colombian or South American or Southern Central American lineage with the true red tails, the boa constrictors, the BCCs. And some of the morphs actually originally did come from the BCCs that are now intermingled with the other imperators. And a lot of the time that is because even though the imperators have been considered by most scientists for quite a few years now, in fact, I think in over two decades at this point, the imperators have been considered their own species separate from the boa constrictors, boa imperator, boa constrictor. I've gone at length about this in other videos, just a quick recap again, um, but they're still intermixed all the time and still to this day. And while I am not necessarily someone who is against those hybrid animals, I typically won't. However, I feel as long as you just let us know what you're doing and what you're producing and label them correctly as such, then I mean, whatever, we're still taking care of snakes and boxes, right? Snakes, snakes and boxes. Now this girl here, again, not an Imperator, not a BCC, but she is a hybrid, a straight 50-50 cross of two other boa constrictor subspecies. There's more than just locality when it comes to the true boa constrictors. There are several subspecies. When you look at her, you can you some of the more boa avid people might be able to figure out what that hybrid is right now. Drum roll please. She is actually a mix of an Argentinian boa or BCO and a Bolivian short tail boa or the silverback boas or BCA, which is the Amorellii. Now, some scientists or whoever we want to fight with on the internet have actually started to consider the Amorellii not actually a subspecies of the boa constrictor and are pretty vague about whether or not they're their own species or a subspecies of Imperator. So, nah, whatever about that one. But when you look at her, you can clearly see that she does kind of share like a perfect blended mix of those two subspecies. She has that dark coloration, that high speckling when you see that belly, when you see that dark tail, and especially if she will look, if she will come this way, you can see her head. There we go. You can see her head. It is a nice, really good example of that kind of straight mix between the Argentinian and then that Bolivian. So the Bolivian, a lot of the longer lines that is more reminiscent of the silverback, the short tail boa, but then the coloration and the speckling is an Argentine. And then when you look at her neck, you see those kind of diamonds in her saddles. That is a very, not 100% unique, but a very typical example of the short tail boa. And then yes, obviously that tail, as she's holding onto my ponytail, here's her vent. So that's, that's how long her tail is, just this. So that's that short tail boa. Now you may have noticed that her behavior is a little bit squirrely um, in the video. This is actually, I think like take three. So she's kind of settled down a little bit, but boa in it. So blue here, in addition to being a very unique boa and an example about hybridization and varying opinions about that, she's also a very good example about something that a lot of boas will suffer from in proper captive care. So the number one thing that boas suffer from in captivity is actually obesity. Even though boas and pythons have very slow metabolisms when compared to any mammalian or birds, which are still technically reptiles, but they're more warm-blooded, 
they have much faster metabolisms. Boas have especially slow metabolisms. They take exorbitantly long amounts of time to fully process and digest their prey. Sometimes even taking what a lot of people will consider a moderate sized meal will take three to four times longer than what even more experienced keepers would expect for them to fully digest. And what that means is if you're feeding a boa constrictor the same way you feed, say, a ball python or heck, even a big boa, something like a Burmese python in comparison, you're going to lead to fatty livers, a lot of really bad collection of fatty tissue buildup, stress on internal organs, and it can lead to shortened lifespans. And that's something we don't really like. So that's the number one thing. But the other thing that boas really do suffer from is overheating. And while yes, these guys are exothermic animals, they're cold blooded, and that means they need to warm up. And typically in a lot of the care sheets, including stuff that I've talked about my own, they require basking spots up into the upper 80s and very occasionally, depending on the different subspecies or whatever out there, even into the low 90s. Although usually I recommend sitting around that high 80s mark, unless you have a very large enclosure you can offer very isolated basking spot. These guys are very prone to overheating. And what happens is when they overheat, it essentially kind of melts their brain a bit. And so if they're given extended periods of high heat that would be considered pretty warm for even a ball python, that can unfortunately kill your animal. But if it's experienced for only a short amount of time, say if you have a malfunction with your flex watt and your thermostat, or you're using something without a thermostat, or in the case of most likely of blue, which I'm kind of giving the breeder the benefit of the doubt because it was shipped during summer, overheating in transit, or it isn't experienced over a long period of time, or it's very hot in short amount of time, that can lead to a neurological issue. And so that's why she's looking kind of like a jaguar carpet or even a little bit like a spider ball python. So she serves as a very good example for people who want to learn and care for these kind of unique animals is that that's something that people have to be very aware of. So not only her actual lineage and kind of the interesting conversation and somewhat of an argument behind the whole hybridization thing, regardless of subspecies or not, or locale or yada, 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 but actual proper captive care that needs to always be remembered that even though, especially as someone who is working with multiple species such as myself, or even not to this near degree of into the high double digits of multiple species, they cannot all be kept the same. Even if kept at general room temperatures, a lot of stuff needs to be dialed in. It even kept at a good ambient temperature for these more tropical animals, more things need to be dialed in to make it perfect for those species. You can't keep boas the same way you keep ball pythons. You technically can't even keep Burmese pythons, blood pythons wrong, golem pythons the same way you keep ball pythons. And that same thing applies for boas. So even the Dumeril's boas really shouldn't be kept the exact same way as the Imperators and Colombians. And heck, even some of the Colombians and Imperators need to be kept a little bit differently depending on where they come from. They are fairly resilient animals, so they put up with quite a bit. But again, yeah, proper research and all of that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Got a little preachy to the extent of which I get preachy anyway, but just wanted to like to let you guys know about some really good information about the captive care of these animals and talk about this absolutely wonderful girl named Blue who she won't ever be breeding, but she makes a great ambassador when she's not really kind of silly. And for those people wondering why I named her Blue, I honestly do not remember the event timeline of when I watched the Jurassic Park movie with the Velociraptor blue, or the fact that she actually changes hormonally color. Sometimes she's this really nice black, black and gray white with a little bit of brown mix in there. But sometimes, not when she's actually going into shed or into blue, she will actually turn like a steel gun metal gray blue that looks much closer to the silverback coloration. And that's what she really looked like, not only in the pictures, but when I very first got her and unboxed her, she looked that kind of gunmetal steel gray blue. And so that's why we named her that. So I wasn't necessarily naming after the raptor in Jurassic World Park, whatever, but because of what she looked like. And so it's a really beautiful little animal that just has a really interesting and cool backstory. However, a little bit sad. Like I said, I'm just giving the seller the benefit of the doubt about overheating. And to be completely honest with you, I was not 100% sure about that behavior. 
So I was fairly inexperienced when I got her at the time, and now that I even know better, she serves as a very good example of that. So sorry, a little bit of long rambling there at the end. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Again, if you want to check out any of the other animals that I have in my care, I'm working going through all of them. Um, here's the playlist here at the end. And if you would like to, please subscribe, hit the bell notification, share with your friends, all of that great YouTube stuff. It really helps me out. Um, it's quite a quite an arduous thing right now, as we all know. So even just doing something as liking, sharing, and telling your friends about me really helps me out. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Thank you all so much for watching and we will check you next time.